This video here is gonna outline literally everything I wanna see added to NBA 2K19. Yo, the list is long, man. For plenty of reasons, there's a bunch of stuff that they took out of 2K18 that was in previous iterations, or I feel like they're missing that should have been in the franchise for a while now that I wanna see for sure, for sure added in 2K19. In the comments, leave the most important thing you wanna see. Of course, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new, but let's get into it. First thing I mentioned in the last video, proximity chat. I'm just saying, if you're in a playground, you should be able to speak to the people around you. And that goes without saying. There should be a push to talk feature if the guy is 10 feet away and you can communicate so you don't have to be in squads to talk to one another. I don't know of a neighborhood that you can't talk to people in. It feels like an artificial neighborhood. Y'all try to create a neighborhood. You can walk around, do this, do that, but you can't talk to anybody around you. It's antisocial. Yeah, simple feature will be dope if it was in the game. Also, an option to mute for the people who don't want to have to deal with somebody blasting their music with the push to talk clicked on. That would that would be frustrating. For whatever reason, NBA 2K18, they took out a feature that was, it just made sense in 2K17. You were able to talk to the other team. Can you imagine playing a basketball game and you can't talk smack to the other team? In 2K17, I would play a game. I will be talking to somebody on the other team when I'm playing on the park and I would be friends with him and link up, squad up on the next game. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. You know how many times this happened to me? I got people on my friends list as evidence of that. Stop taking away features that make sense, all right? Talking to the other team is perfectly fine. I don't know why they would remove that in 2K18, but now you can only talk to people on your team and it just feels like I'm missing out on something. Oh. Of course, the most important thing for me because I've been playing so much Prime is private matchmaking. All-Star Team Up already has a private matchmaking. The fact that they haven't brought it over in 2K17, 18, 17, 16, 21. All the 2Ks is ridiculous. You don't need me to go into this. If you've been following the channel, you already know forever now. I've been crying for a ranked, unranked playlist. You need to be able to divide the casual fan from the more competitive fan. Now, even on games like me where I'm kind of casual, I still like to play ranked on Rainbow Six every single time I get a chance. And it just goes without saying, it gives meaning for the games. A lot of the times you play on the park, it feels monotonous, like you're not working towards anything. I, I, I refuse to go in depth on this because I've done it so many times, but literally every game does it. <laughs> when I say every game, I mean every game. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. We need a leaderboard system. It is ludicrous that they keep taking out features that worked in previous games. There's less stats on NBA 2K18 that counts you up on leaderboards against other folks than there was on 2K17. Did I say that right? Listen, all I know is if I'm playing Rainbow Six, I can literally go on a website and search up someone's username and find every single stat in every single season that they've ever done. For whatever reason, that motivates me. Every single season, I wanna hit plat. If someone's talking smack to me and they wanna search up my shit, they'll go, yo, I'm talking to a plat, he's not playing no games. Now, eventually, I wanna get to the point where I'm a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. And then I'm gonna really be talking smack. But it gives you a sense of meaning and purpose when you're playing a game and it tracks everything you do. It goes without saying the 2K leaderboard system is horrible. The only reason I could think of why they haven't implemented an in-depth leaderboard system is because they don't wanna use and pay for server space that it's gonna take to save all that stuff. But damn it, if that's the actual reason, man, what a shame. I mean, I know a lot of 2K's, no, I know all of 2K's decisions are motivated by whether or not they can make money off it. But for a second, let's just stop thinking about making money Think about making a great product, and how about the money will follow? Hey, if Fortnite's been any indication, free to play game, user base is massive, people enjoy the game so much, they're willing to support it by buying skins using the microtransaction system. Talking about microtransactions, that's next up. Now, this part here, 2K will never do. I listen, every single person in the community can come together and sign a petition, and until they stop making money off microtransactions, they won't listen. But y'all need to chill a little bit, a lot actually, chill a lot, calm down. Calm down, it's relaxation, chill out, it's top screen. The microtransactions is ridiculous. The worst in the gaming industry is by 2K and EA. There are plenty of people that look at 2K and go, the gameplay is great. But the, the thing that draws them away from playing the game or even buying the game is that once they buy the game, they're expected to 
spend so much on microtransactions that it's ludicrous. Cut back on that. Man, I remember uh, back in 2K13, the first time I bought VC to open up some packs, man, I just knew it was gonna blow up. And every single year they've been making more money off of it. So I know they would never listen to this point of the video. Actually, they probably won't listen to anything I say, but this is for a lot of people, the most important thing going into 2K19. Chill out on the microtransactions. If you focus on making a great game, a lot of people will support it. Don't force people's hands. Games like Fortnite, a lot of them, literally all the microtransactions you buy are cosmetic. Same goes with CSGO. On 2K, you can literally pay to win. Like on Pro-Am, I literally have to buy Gatorades and Boosts because all the other players do it. And if I don't buy VC to buy Gatorades and Boosts, I can't keep up with the competition. They'll have a huge advantage on me when I'm playing in these games. So, uh, you don't need me to go into that. I've talked about it enough. Chill out. I feel like it would be dope, just like in Tekken 7, if there was in-game tournaments. So you didn't have to go to third-party sites and this and that, just to orchestrate a tournament. You could do it in My League Online, go to the playoffs and face against each other with real NBA teams. But it'd be dope to be able to do the same thing on the park and or the pro app in game, that'd be dope. I think this one's a pretty simple one I think a lot of people would appreciate, it would save time. Yo, why can't we choose where we spawn on the park? Like, I wanna be able to spawn in the Team Pro-Am arena so I don't have to move around left, right, right? I wanna be able to spawn in the walk-on arena or at the park or near the statue. Like, if you could just choose your spawn so we won't have to run to every single destination, that'd be dope too. Now this one goes without saying, sometimes you hop on the park and it takes you 15, 20 minutes to get into a game. Why don't we have matchmaking on the park yet? Like, it's not even like a, they have it in the game. It's not like a whole new feature they have to make. A lot of this is just copy and paste, make adjustments. In fact, if you guys have been playing the park and you hopped into the Ruffles event, it match makes you into a park-like game mode. So it's already in the game. They just don't do it for a regular park. They only ever used it for that Ruffles event. So just allow us the opportunity for people that don't want to wait around 24 seven or don't want to, it's cool to be able to walk around the park. I don't want to strip people of that feature, but just allow the people who don't care about that stuff to just be able to match make and kick it, play a game or two, right? In 2K17, between park games, where a lot of change jump shots you could put a different hat on, like you had enough time to make adjustments. In NBA 2K18, because it takes forever to load up the My Player Lab, you can't do that. So if I'm on a 15 game win streak and I feel like I wanna change my jump shot for whatever reason, I can't do that without leaving the game and ruining the win streak. So for example, I'm on a 22 game win streak around the start of 2K and I realized the latency spiked up and so my jump shot wasn't hitting anymore and I wanted to be able to switch it but I couldn't, right? So it was in the game in the past, it'd just be nice if it was back. Honestly, it'd be dope if they had a clan system in the game, right? It doesn't have to be a super detailed clan system like how SOCOM used to do it. It could be like Call of Duty where you just put on a clan tag, but it would be neat if there was just some sort of system so that you can show that you're on some team that you really rep. Honestly, I think it would be dope if they separated my park, my career, and Pro-Am rep. Cause it'd be sometimes I'm playing Pro-Am and the guy on the other team has gold shoes or whatever, which means he's a very high overall, but he's ass. And we end up beating the team by 20 and we're like, it's not a good representation of how good he is. It'd be cool if they separated those because if you're high in one level, people start to assume you're good and then you get slapped and it's just not a good look for you. If I'm in the park, I don't wanna leave the park, choose the build I wanna play with next, and then reload into the park. This should be a system where I can just scroll through my build and then click the one I wanna switch to, and then it just loads me in so I don't have to deal with all the extra loading screens. On top of that, it'd be dope if you guys just lowered the loading screens, especially the one to the my court. That one takes forever, and my PS4 sounds like it's about to combust every time I go up on the elevator. This is, I think, one of the most important things. We need some sort of new content. 2K makes no effort to create any new content. I mean, on my team, they just release cards and then people buy packs. And on the perk, they release like a couple outfits. 2K never releases content for free. Every time they release content, we have to pay VC for it, so they're making money off of it. It seems like every time they think about creating new content, if they can't find a way to generate revenue off of it, it's off the table and it's not happening. When was the last time they released a shirt for free? I'll wait. So, I mean, just... There needs to be some sort of new content. I know like part of the dev team is working on the next title, but the people that bought the game, they, you gotta keep it fresh somehow. And house rules, rotating house rules, anti up, that's not gonna work. It's literally the same events over and over and over again. It has to add a new animation here or there, right? Like, like add a new ball that people, like just do something to freshen. 
A little bit, at least. Not a lot. I don't think I'm asking for a lot. Uh, 2K made like zero effort this year to think of some new park events. They've literally been making the same rotation of park events all year long. Do you guys remember Park After Dark and how big a waste of time that was in 2K17? It seemed like e even when they try and add some sort of new content, it it's the biggest of failures. And so that's definitely something they have to work on. Of course, I mean, you can't have a wish list video without talking about the servers. The latency on 2K is the worst of any game I play. On Fortnite, I have 39 milliseconds. On Rainbow Six, I have like 25 milliseconds. On Tekken 7, a game that's pretty bad when it comes to latency, I have like 120. And that's the worst it usually gets. 2K is like a multiple of three. I usually have around three, 400 milliseconds of latency. That is ridiculous. Y'all gotta find a way, man. It's very difficult to time your jump shot when it's changing every day. One day, servers is bugging, one day they're cool, one day it's bugging again, and it's like, yo, man, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, I think the entire park community can agree on this one. It'd be cool to have different parks back. I mean, the whole playground situation I even talked about when they announced it is like, yo, I know around December, January, it's gonna start to get stale. Cause in previous years, we can go to three different parks on top of the ante up and the house rules and whatever else they had. But now it's, it's literally just like one park. You can't go to Sunset Beach, then Rivet City, then Old Town one day. You can't switch up the environment. You're looking at the same courts every single time you wanna play park. And it helps reinforce that monotonous over and over again feel. Cause there's no way to switch it up and have a different variety. Like when I was on 2K17, one day, I I'd play on Old Town. Then we hop on with our guys and we're like, yo, today let's play on Sunset, right? We switched it up every single time because it, it made it feel like we were playing, it was it was fresh, at least we were looking at something different, even if the animations are the same. Uh, park community will agree with this one as well. We need like, at least a little bit better park rep rewards. The rep rewards this year were pretty sus. Literally one of the awards was the machines that kick the ball to you so you can practice shooting. Like, <laughs> How is that not something that comes with every single my court? We should be able to practice shooting without running for our own rebounds. We're supposed to be NBA players. You don't think we can find somebody to rebound for us? That's ridiculous. It's absolutely ludicrous that 2K does a horrible job of allowing 2K players to improve on their game. And that's like a whole nother story. You had to get in depth on that. But there's no real way to improve on shooting because you can try to do it on the my court, but you can't add latency to the my court. And so when you're playing on the Pro-Am in the park, when you actually have high latency, is the jump shot's not gonna be the same. So all that repetition you did on the my court is not gonna matter in other places when you're playing online. There should be an in-depth practicing facility where you can do everything you need to do to improve as a player. Instead, I find myself a lot of the time practicing in actual games. <laughs> so I'll be playing a comp game on the PS4, playing with my Pro-Am team, and that's where I try out new jump shots, or that's where I try out new this or new that, because there's no real way to do it on 2K. So the 2K League is coming out, which is dope, but there's only 102 people in the league. There's thousands and millions of more people that play 2K, so I think it would be dope for the people that like to play or even would like to get into competitive 2K to have like a whole amateur circuit. So while the 2K League is doing their own thing, the amateur circuit can help prove that they're the best that aren't in the league. And so you can run different tournaments, you can run a season, you could, there's a whole bunch of possibilities both for the park and for the pro-am on the amateur circuit that 2K can run if they decide to. Like I think it would be a dope idea. Now if you guys played uh, Black Ops 2, they had what they call a pro league, and so if you could grab like three of your buddies and you four can hop into a pro league game and work your way up the rank. And then the people at the very top would qualify for an open bracket and they would actually get a chance to go to these massive tournaments and compete against the pros. Now a lot of the time they get slapped. <laughs> They get destroyed. But still, I think it allowed an opportunity for people in the community to improve at the game, prove they're the best on the amateur circuit, go into the pros, and then prove if they have what it took. I think like it, it, this should be a no-brainer, and honestly, of all the things I said here, I think this one has the biggest possibility of coming to fruition. Maybe not exactly how I anticipate it, but I, I, I expect them to do something for the amateurs that aren't playing in the 2K League. When I say amateurs, I just mean people who aren't pros. Of course, you don't need me to go into it. I think the game needs a bigger skills gap. Part of the reason why people enjoy Fortnite so much is because when you get into the game, it's very, very challenging. But the second somebody experiences one of those late game situations on Fortnite, they get hooked because they realize how challenging it is 
to win consistently and it gives them a drive to work to improve to get better at aiming to get better at building to learn the maps get better in terms of iq so that they can be great at the game so they can get that same level of enjoyment over and over again the thing about 2k is the game is so easy to get into you don't really get that feeling you don't get the feeling that you're working towards mastering anything i can leave 2k not play for two months come back and still dominate against competitive folks on the pro end if i left rainbow six for two months and i got into a diamond lobby i would get destroyed and so there's just something about having a skills gap that makes the game more meaningful like you're really really working towards something and uh, I think it's really showing in Fortnite. It's a perfect balance between a casual game and a competitive game. It's difficult to get very good, but you can still have a lot of fun, even if you're a casual, on your way to being really good. That goes without saying. I think every single game that has blown up in the past decade has had a good balance in skills gap. So it's not mind-numbingly boring until you get good. It's still fun, but it motivates you to want to really get good. And last but not least, can we skip cutscenes? Why do I have to watch Be Fresh eat Reese's Puffs every single time? <laughs> Is it necessary? Like, I, I'm tired of watching Be Fresh pull up in my spot. I'm just trying to hop around in the my court, practice my dribble moves. Why is she in there? And then if she's in there, why do I have to sit through the most mind-numbing conversations with people I don't care about? If they didn't add a story into my career next year, I literally wouldn't care. If, if, if they didn't add a story, but they added all this other stuff, I'd be the happiest guy ever. It's just not what I'm into. I get some people like the my career story, so they'll never take it out. But for the people that don't care about it, yo, let us skip the cutscenes. God damn. 2K is not a game people buy for the story mode, all right? If I want to play a game with a story mode, I'll buy Metal Gear Solid 4 or The Last of Us. I have both those games, so I don't have to buy them. And I enjoyed playing both those games in their story modes. 2K story mode is super simplistic. There's no real depth to it. And aside from a couple of cases, there's never been a situation where I cared about a character that they tried to develop. I mean, that's besides the point. Just skip up a cutscenes would be cool. No, this would be last but not least. 2K, let 2K19 be the year where not every single decision is motivated by revenue. Let's just for a second focus on leaderboards. It costs money, you don't get anything back unless you make us pay for the leaderboards, in which case that would be ridiculous. Yo, just make some decisions that are focused on making a good game. You'll end up making money, 2K, all right? They said they made 500 million in microtransactions in 2016, and that number jumped in 2017, likely to make more in 2018. So the money is there, you'll end up just for, just make, make a good game, make a good game. I don't even know what to expect at this point. I mean, I have hope that the game is gonna be great. I didn't mind the gameplay from 2K18. I think it's good. I, I wish they nerfed blow buys and snatchbacks. I feel like that's the biggest thing for me. But the gameplay is great. It's so weird that we're talking about 2K18 like it's a quote unquote garbage 2K. And the main problem people are having with the game isn't even the most important thing, which is the gameplay. It's everything around it. It's, it's the lack of features or the lack of new content or microtransactions. And I feel like all of that stuff can be fixed. And if it is, it'll make a really dope next game. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it on that. I don't wanna make the video too long. I mean, I told y'all it was a hefty list. If you guys enjoy, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. Yo, I probably missed something that you really, do like, AJ, how can we put it in the comment section, all right? I'm gonna catch y'all later. I'm out. Peace.